Hello and welcome to the microwave engineering lecture titled Impedance Matching Using Smith Charts. In this lecture, we're going to look at why it is important to use impedance matching. Then we will look at different ways to do impedance matching. First will be two elements with an example and the second way will be single stub with another example. The basic idea of impedance matching is shown in this figure, in which a matching network is connected in between a transmission line and the load impedance. The matching network is ideally lossless in order to avoid any loss of power and is usually designed so that the impedance seen into the matching network is equal to the impedance of the transmission line. This means that reflections on the left of the matching network will be eliminated although reflections between the load impedance and the matching network can occur. Impedance matching is important for the following reasons. First, we want the maximum power delivered to the load, and this is achieved when the load is matched to the line. The second point is improved signal to noise ratio, which is very important for sensitive components such as antennas and amplifiers. The third point is to reduce amplitude and phase errors in power distribution networks, such as an antenna rate feed network. To design the matching network, it is important to consider factors such as complexity, the frequencies of operation, ease of implementation, and behavior with variable loads. All these factors play a very important role that may be important in the selection of the matching network to be designed. The first matching network we're going to look at is the L network, which is the most common impedance matching circuit. It is also one of the simplest because it uses only two reactive elements to match any arbitrary load to the transmission line. There are two possible configurations for this network, as shown in these figures. The first one is when the normalized load impedance is located inside the 1 plus JX circle. In this case, the matching network is going to look like this. The second option is when the normalized load impedance lies outside of the 1 plus JX circle and thus the network is going to look like this. Now we're going to take a look at an example. Suppose that we have a transmission line with impedance of 100 ohms connected to a load of 200 minus J100 ohms and also connected to a generator with a frequency of 500 megahertz and we wish to create a matching network. On our right we have the Smith chart with the 1 plus JX circle highlighted for convenience. The first step is to normalize the load impedance which gives us a value of 2 minus J1. In the Smith chart this impedance is located here. Since the load impedance is located in the inside the 1 plus JX circle, the option 1 is chosen. The admittance of ZL is 0 0.4 minus J0.2. The first element of the network is in parallel, so we're going to move along the admittance circle in the positive direction which in this case is downwards, in order to intersect the 1 plus JX circle. So we move from this point to the intersection of the circle. We look at the impedance here and at the impedance at the intersection. This means that the first element will be a shunt capacitor of value of plus J0.29. Now the second element is in series. So now we're going to move along the impedance circle, along the 1 plus JX circle, to the center of the chart. In this case, we move from here to here. And in impedance values, we move from minus J 1.23 all the way to here at J0. 
Since we are moving upwards in the impedance, the element will be a series inductor of value of J1.23. Here in this mid chart, you can see the summary of the navigation between the points to get the matching network. The last step is just to obtain the values for the circuit elements. In this case, the capacitor is going to have this value and the inductor has this value. In the first solution, we walked in the positive direction of the admittance circle, which was downwards. We can also walk the admittance circles in the negative direction, which is in this case upwards, to intersect the 1 plus Jx circle. Looking at the admittance here and the admittance here means that the element is going to be a shunt inductor of value minus J0.69. Now from this point, we walked along the impedance circle to the center of the chart. This yields a series capacitor with value of minus 1.22. Here is a summary of the navigation we did on the Smith chart to get the matching network. The last step is to obtain the values for the circuit elements. In this case, the capacitor has this value and the inductor has this value. Now we will take a look at stub tuning. Remember the formula for the reflection coefficient. This formula means that power is reflected due to an impedance mismatch between the load and the transmission line. Now for stub tuning, it is desired to add a short circuit stub to match the impedance. The distance from the load to the stub is going to be dA and the length of the stub is going to be LA. This stub will yield a reflection coefficient of 0. Recalling the impedance transformation lecture, we can calculate the distance from the load to the stub by walking away from the load until the real part of the input admittance is 1 over Z0, which is given by this expression. At this point, the real part of the admittance is matched to the transmission line. Now it is possible to match this admittance by introducing a shunt element with the conjugate susceptance. In order to realize this shunt susceptance with a short circuit stuff, we need to back up some distance LA from a short circuit load until the input admittance is minus JBA. Finally, we will add the stub at the position dA from the load to cancel the susceptance of the load with this length. Now we will have the load matched and there will be zero reflection. Here is an example for a single stub tuning. A 50 ohm transmission line with an air core operates at 100 MHz and is connected to a load impedance of ZL equals 27.5 plus J35 ohms design a single stub tuner. The first step is to normalize the impedance and calculate the wavelength. The normalized impedance is given by this and the wavelength is 3 meters. We will use the combined impedance and admittance Smith chart for this example. The next step is to plot the impedance and find the admittance. We read that the admittance is 0.70 minus J0.88. Now we identify the 1 plus JV circle on the admittance chart. From the initial admittance, we will walk clockwise around the constant visor until the 1 plus JV circle intersects it. If we keep walking, we'll have two intersections one at point A and another at point B. We will pick point A because it leads to the shortest stub. 
from walking from the admittance point to point A, we need to know how far clockwise did we traverse to get to this point. We start here at 0.113 wavelengths and we move all the way to 0.416 wavelengths. This means that we traversed a distance of 0.303 wavelengths. This will be our distance, which in centimeters is going to be 90.9 .9 centimeters. We chose point A, so YA is the admittance where the stub is about to be placed. It has a value of 1 plus J1.1. So we need to have an admittance of minus J1.1 to cancel the reactive component. We achieve this by locating the minus J1.1 circle on the chart in order to set up the admittance transformation in the stub. Once we have located the circle, we will start at the far left side of the chart and move clockwise to the point located above. This means that we move away from short circuit. By doing this, we are doing an admittance transformation to realize minus J1.1, which will give us the length of our single stub. After this, we determine the distance in wavelength that this circle represents. This is our length of the stub. We start at 0.0, .0 and we finish at 0.118 wavelengths. In centimeters, this is 35.4. And this is how you realize single stub tuning using Smith charts.